Head Excel Decision 1, Critical Path Analysis 1, Activity Networks. Using dummy activities and activity networks. Sometimes we need to use what are called dummy activities in an activity network. This could be needed to preserve the logical order of the processes or to ensure that each activity is uniquely defined by an ordered pair IJ, where I is the starting event and J is its finishing event. Dummy activities are always indicated as directed dotted lines. They always have a direction, but they have zero length or weighting. So here's an example will involve the necessity for a dummy activity. So here for example we have our start node. That's my first node, so that is the event starting the project. A has no precedence, so I can put A on straight away. And a nice little detail is to put the duration in brackets so you know how long the activity lasts. B has no precedence, so that can start straight away. There's B. Notice the directed arc as well. You must have the arrow on, and it lasts. Duration is two. Right. You one way of spotting whether you need a dummy activity is if you get a repeated use of a letter in your precedence activity. So here we have an activity that depends on A and one that depends on A and B. So that repeated use of letter A flags up the need for a dummy activity. So C follows A on its own and D follows A and B. So to show C follows A on its own, that can be achieved by simply putting C straight in. So there's C, ask for 4 and it follows A. But now we need D to follow A and B. And the only way I can show that clearly is to put a node in there and a dummy activity coming down from A to the end of B and then follow it with activity D. So if we just stop and check this. So we can only travel down the dummy. We've got to follow the arrow. So C only follows A as required. D follows B, but because of the dummy, it also follows A. So D follows A and B, C follows only A. And to preserve the order of the nodes, that would need to be the second node, and this one at the bottom of the dummy is the third node. E follows D. So at the end of D, I can have a fourth node, and E which lasts for three units, follows that. Um, you're not allowed to have two end nodes, so we need to bring these two together to have one end node, and that is the fifth end node. So there's a neat version. You can see there, always double check your precedence after you've drawn it, that C only follows the arrow for A, Whereas D follows the arrow for B and it follows, because of the dummy, the arrow for A. And there's a zero there just to remind you that it has no weighting along the dummy. So here's example two. And we'll draw a network for this and see when we need the dummy activity. So we start off with our start node and then activity A for one, no precedence. B has no precedence. So B lasts for two, no precedence. Now, if you see the repeated use of letter B, we need an activity that follows B on its own, but we need one to follow A and B. So I can easily show E following B on its own. So there's E following B. But now I need to show, for example, C follows A and B. I can't put the dummy pointing downwards. If I put the dummy pointing downwards, then E would follow A, which is not part of the presence table. 
I have to have the dummy pointing upwards so that now if I put C on if you double check this C activity C is definitely following A and it's also because of the dummy if you follow B and the dummy C is following B D also follows A and B so I could put D here so there's D D is also following A and B and to preserve the order of the nodes I need two at the beginning of the dummy and node three at the end of the dummy now we need to finish off this diagram we can't have three end points so I need to bring them together so one way of bringing them together would be to bring E to join the end of D so that's my fifth node and I cannot link C, C directly to this if I link C directly across it means that D and C would share the same start and end node so I need a dummy here and it, that will be my fourth node and that has to come in before the final node so you see now C is defined by 3 comma 4 and D is defined by 3 comma 5 and E is defined by 2 comma 5 so each of them has a unique pair of identification nodes. So if C and D both are joined to the same node here, they will no longer be uniquely identified. We need to have a unique pair of nodes for each activity. In the next session, we'll be constructing a presence table for an activity network.